I'm Emma and today we're going to be making masks using a mould and casting technique. Um, so here's one that I've already done. And this mask has been made from dough, the same sort of dough that you make bread out of. And at first you make a Play-Doh. So here I've got some Play-Doh as an example. This Play-Doh is bright yellow because I made it out of turmeric, flour and water. Then I rolled it into shapes like and to make a mask, baked it to harden it, made a paper mache and then created it. So, um, so I'll show you how and where the inspiration came from. So moulding and casting is a technique that's used across industries. Um, so you can use it in prop making, costume making, uh, sculptors use it, theatre designers. You can make objects, toys, for example, Lego is um, mould making, plastic cups that will be making a mould and casting technique. And also, in the natural environment, what we can see as a mould and cast is fossils because there's the imprint of the old um, creature and then from that is a cast. And also in volcanic eruptions, that's another example of like naturally made um, mould and casts. So this is a artist from China who makes um, toys and figurines out of dough. So this example here is just to show you how um, intricate um, you can make things just out of dough, just out of flour and water. So you will need for this workshop to make the dough, these ingredients here, flour, salt, oil, some water, some food colouring if you want to make it all exciting, and um, some oil to separate the mould from the cast. And then to make the paper mache, it's these ingredients here. Paper, flour, water and some heat to make it all glue like. So this is some dough which I've already made. And it's bright yellow. I've added some turmeric. It's got a lovely texture. You can see it in the light. It's fantastic. So to make this dough, what you need is you need some flour. This one's got gluten in it, but you can also make it out of other types of flour. But they all have different, slightly different qualities, which are good for certain things. So I'm just going to make a small amount just to show you. So first things first, I put my flour, I've made a little well. You want to get loads of salt so that your um, dough mixture doesn't go off or rot. Now, to make it a little bit more exciting, I'm going to add some food colouring. The other one, the yellow one, I've used turmeric. This one's red, although it looks a bit more pink, to be honest, once it's done. Now, the next thing is oil. So, it doesn't, it doesn't ever have to be too precise, but I, what I usually do is I usually fill up my first well with oil. That's roughly about half a cup. And you can start... The reason why you have them well is to try and reduce the mess. But if you have a big mixing bowl, then you can also mix it in a bowl. And this gets quite sticky, but that's what's fun about it. And you just have to keep working with it until you start to get a day. So, so far I've only got oil in there and you, as you can see it's gone a bit crumbly and it's not yet sticky. So now I need to add my water. So scooping it back up together, creating my little well and then adding a tiny, tiny bit of water at a time. Oh. It's going all over the place. And the reason why you want to just add a little bit of water at a time is because you don't need that much water to make a nice dough. So you want to knead this flour and this water. 
And by kneading, once it becomes slightly less sticky, you'll be able to knead it, which means you're stretching out the gluten and you're rolling up the flour, spreading that water through the flour till you get an, a nice and elastic -y dough. So usually this takes about five minutes. If you've got more flour and dough, it can take way longer, but already we're starting to see this substance transform into your dough. This needs a touch more water, but we're not far off. If I had more flour though, this would take much, much longer. I might have added too much water. If you add too much water, it's okay, because then you can just add a sprinkle more flour afterwards. And you can keep playing with it until you feel like you've got the right amount. And a good way to test is that if your flour is all sticky and it sticks to your hand, then that means you've probably got a bit too much water. Because when you know that you've got the right sort of dough, it's when you can roll around your dough and it starts to unstick everything from your hand and it almost starts to clean the table. So I can tell that this is getting about right because it's starting to clean up my table. So if you just keep playing around when you get to this point, you might want to add a slightly bit more water, slightly bit more flour, and you just keep going until you get a really nice consistency. So here is some dough I prepared earlier. This one is green and it's um it's got quite a nice amount of oil in so to make the mask the first bit of mask what you want to do is you want to roll your dough into a ball once you have your ball like this the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make um the initial rounded face so once you have your ball, you can gently press on it and it starts to flatten out. But as it flattens out, if you squeeze slightly on the side, you can start to make it look a little bit more oblong or oval. So it's slightly longer this way and shorter along here. So once you've got the shape of a face, so just like a, an oval shape here, you want a nice round on it so that you can get the depth of your mask. So I'm just gonna slightly press round, almost cupping. I should have put some flour down actually first so that it didn't stick. Okay. So I'm just pushing down the edges slightly and this gives me a really nice rounded face shape. Slight push down. So now we've got our basic face shape. We can start to make our eyes and our nose. So to get our eyes and the nose, in the same way that we draw a face usually, um, I'm going to draw a rough guideline of where I want my eyes and my nose. So my eyes, I'm going to draw a line halfway and my nose, a line down the middle halfway. Then halfway between my eyes, my nose, I'm going to draw another line. And that's roughly where, between my nose and my mouth. And another line below that for my mouth. Now I realise this is quite small, so I'm just going to make it slightly bigger by pushing it down. So I've got my, my lines. 
Now this is the fun bit because this is where you get to sculpt your face. So to make the eyes, I take my two thumbs and I put them either side of this middle line. And with my hands pointing away from me, I slowly push down into the dough. I don't want to reach the bottom. I want at least a centimeter or two away from the bottom. So my thumbs have gone down about that much. So I've pushed down. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my eyebrow. So using this part, the pads of my thumb, I'm just gonna support the top layer of that dough up and out. So I'm going up and out. So I'm creating a nice arc, almost. And this creates a nice eyebrow shape. And doing it two at the same time creates it a little bit symmetrical. And can you see I've left a gap? It's, it's about two centimeters, maybe three centimeters in between my eyes. So it's just under three fingers. So I've got my eye sockets, which were whole, my eyebrows, and my nose is starting to form. Now I'm just gonna leave that nose as a bridge because I'm actually gonna add an extra bit on top. And I'll explain why I do that in a moment. So I'm happy with my eye shape. I'm now going to say my nose comes down to here, this line that I drew. So underneath my nose, I'm going to slightly press down. Not far, maybe like a centimetre. I'm going to press a line the whole way across. And this means that my cheeks are higher than my where I'm going to then go below and put my mouth. So I've just done a line about a centimeter lower. So for my mouth, I want to create a little chin. So either side of the center, about halfway. So if my eyes are coming down, about halfway of my eyes, I'm gonna slightly press down again possibly by a centimetre. And I'm gonna slowly push out those cheeks. And this means that my chin here is more raised than these cheeks here. And these bigger cheeks are higher than the ones next to my mouth. So we're getting different layers, the eyes, eyebrows, these nice fluffy cheeks. I can even make them more rounded by going and in, working into my eye sockets. Then I've got my raised chin. Now at this point, what I want to do with my dough is at the moment it's really soft and it's really malleable and it's really flexible. But through experimenting, I've realized that if I want to make a series of masks, and that means um, the same mask, but perhaps with different expressions, then at this point, I want to create this mask here as a template. Here, I have my template. This is exactly the same shape as what we've just made. Um, so if I want to make multiple masks, but say with different expressions, say like a happy face or a sad face or one mask with a really big nose or one mask with a really small nose, I can use this bit of dough over and over and over again that add different distinct features to make it slightly different. And this means I will create a set of um, uniform masks. So what I want to do with this nice soft dough, which I've just created here, is I want to bake this in the oven on a low heat for, um, you know, for about half an hour or just under, to just give it, just to harden it up slightly. 
you just want to harden the outside so this is better so here was my eyes my eyebrows my chin which is raised and I did this really simply using thumbs here um, and using fingers here and in the meantime I'm going to work on this one which is what I prepared earlier the next thing I want to do is I want to create a nose for it so how I like to think of things is that the bigger the better the bigger something is the more character it has and that doesn't necessarily mean the features have to be big it's it's more like it's just exaggerated because if uh, if I want something with a small nose maybe I do a tiny tiny nose but this one I'm going to do quite a big nose and I've chosen yellow play-doh and I'm just going to put a big round nose in the center above my mouth and underneath my eyes so I've got that round nose and the next thing I want to do is I want to slowly just squeeze out one size I'm actually going to use more play-doh I don't think I've got a big enough bit again into a ball yeah it's better so I've got my I'm gonna make this nice and round okay and I'm now just gonna squeeze one side down and as I squeeze it down it's both going down that way and down this way and it creates kind of a triangle so I end up with something that looks a little bit like a pear and I'm gonna put my pear onto my mask and now I've got a nice big nose if I wanted to add these nostril bits here I'm going to make two more balls and put my balls either side and then I can just slowly work into those to transform it into a 3D nose. So what I'm doing is I'm just moving the dough and smoothing it so that it all becomes one long bit. So that's my nose. Now these bits of dough are not attached so they might slip off but I'm just going to raise it just to show you. So this dough is not attached to this one and it's a different consistency because this one I've put in the oven and this one I've only just made so this one's nice and oily and smooth and playful. Now what I was saying earlier um, about having a set is what's really good about this stage is now you can decide what sort of mouth you want. So I'm going to do a happy mouth. I'm going to do a happy mouth because on this one I did a sad mouth and I want to do one happy, one sad, a little bit like the Greek tragedy masks that are iconic. So I'm going to do one happy and one sad. So on this one I'm going to do a happy face, so I'm just going to build a sausage. When you're making any sort of cast or any sort of mould, is that you don't want an overhang. And what I mean by that is, if you've got a bit of dough and it is um, overhanging, when you cover that, when you try and take out the dough, if it's overhanging, 
it's gonna snap off and you're gonna be left with something inside the mask. So one way, I think it's best to show you. So I'm just gonna do my mouth. It's a very big mouth. So if I'm doing a happy face like that, one way to make sure that this, the paper mache comes off easily when I try and remove it, is to slightly make it, so whatever is the highest point of contact is also the thinnest point. So that means that the cast later on can just slip right off. So I'm just going to make sure that this has a nice bridge on it. And again, this is just to make sure that when I pull my cast off, that the cast doesn't grip anywhere. And the same with my nose. I'm just going to make sure that everything on my nose doesn't overhang so that not too much paper mache can cling onto the underneath of anything. On my other mask, I put two bits of dough and because I want to recreate this, I'm going to do the same. But this is just a super simple technique. And if you think back to those, um, those figurines I showed you on that slideshow, just how intricate you can you can be you're essentially making your own clay and you can mold it and shape it and what I like about um, making your own play-doh is that depending on what you're making or what your preference is you can really get to understand and know the material and you can decide what you do and you don't like so for example this play-doh is really oily. I've put a lot of oil in there and it means it's really soft and really easy to work with. But they have lots of different effects. So for example, for the base of the mask, I've been using flour with gluten in and that's because it has a bit of a spring and a bit of a bounce, which keeps and the gluten, which is like little threads of gluey fibriness. I'm using all the wrong words there, don't quote me on that. But that means that it kind of held, holds its shape together. Whereas like a rice flour, um, that is a lot more mushy and just falls apart a lot more easy. So this is actually using a gluten-free flour and that's why it just pulls apart so easily. Whereas this one kind of clings to itself. So you'll get to know all the different types of um, properties that the material is just through playing and just through experimenting. So here I've got my smiley face. I can just keep playing around with that until I'm happy with it. Now at this point, you can also put this bit in the oven to harden it, but I wouldn't put it in for too long because I don't want it to go too dry and crumbly. But there is my basic mask shape. Now the next thing we need to do is we're gonna make a paper mache. So paper mache, if you don't know, is again, just a technique where you can make um, using paper and glue, a material which then coats something and takes on the shape of the thing that you've coated it with. So to make paper mache, you take paper, you rip the paper into strips like that, and paper, one way it rips really nicely, the other way it rips, normally it doesn't rip so well as that, but yeah. So you want strips of paper which are about that long in size. And next you're gonna make glue. 
So to make a glue, what I've used here is you want one, port, one part um, flour. So you want some flour. And then you want one part water. And you want to mix it together. And then once you've got this nice mixed together consistency, if you then put this on the hob, you can do it raw. But I prefer to put it on some heat for a little while, like the hob. And on the hob, what you can see it does is this milky tech, this mil milky consistency transforms into like a gloopy, almost see-throughy glue-like material. So I've got one that I've prepared earlier. But if you're unsure on how to make um, glue, then I've got a previous demonstration on last week's um, workshop. Again, I'm just going to put some salt into this because again, I don't want anything in my mask or my cast to go rotten. So give it a nice healthy amount of salt. Once it's been on the heat, so this one, as you can see, it's in a pan. I've just had it on the hob. I've just been boiling it. So um, once it's been on the hob, it goes into this nice gloopy material, which is actually a perfect glue. And I've been experimenting. So I use some PVA glue to make some masks with. Um, so this mask was PVA glue. And I've decided I actually prefer using flour and water because it gives it a real good hardness to it. So I've got my glue. I've got my paper in nice strips. I've got my mask. Before I put glue anywhere near my mask, the most important thing I do next is I've got to stop the glue sticking from the act to the actual mask itself. So I need a separating agent. So this is when I take my paper mache off my mask, it will separate nicely um, rather than the glue sticking to the actual mold itself. So to do that, I've just got some Vaseline, some petroleum jelly. Um, you can get really expensive separating agents from model shops, or I literally just get a tin of Vaseline. This one's slightly bigger because I've been making lots of masks, but it's the same stuff as you put on your lips. And I'm just gonna be really generous, super, super generous. And I'm gonna do that multiple times. And I'm just gonna slather the oil all over my mask. And, and I wanna get into every single gap because this is what's gonna stop the paper mache sticking to my mask and ultimately ruining my mask if it if it does stick because it will just all stick together and it might all fall apart but putting on lots and lots of oil or vaseline and really get into those gaps all over you want a nice thick coat and if you forget to do anywhere you'll probably know about it because when you mache off your um, off your mask, you'll know about it because it'll be stick, it'll be stuck, and you're going to have to wiggle hard and pull slightly and wiggle and pull to try and get it off. Whereas if you put on a really, really healthy amount of um, oil, you can avoid it being harder than it needs to. So you can see the difference of where I've not got the oil and where I have. So I'm just going to do it all over. Once you've got your oil protective barrier layer, 
I'm just going to do it in the eye sockets. Once everything's really oiled up, like so, like this head is well oiled, that's when you're ready to start applying your paper mache. Now the paper mache is super easy. Once you have got your paper, which are in these lovely strips. Again, I've been experimenting with lots of different types of paper. So this is printer paper. I found it slightly stiffer, but still very works very well. Um, whereas this, I happen to have some sugar paper lying around. Um, I've also used paper that has come in packaging and newspaper prints, all sorts. But this stuff I really like because it absorbs a lot of water and it also, once it's been absorbent, it's super flexible, which gives it a really smooth finish. So I'm just going to dip my paper mache into the glue, run the glue off with on both sides using my hands and then just stick the paper mache down to my mask and you want to do this and cover it completely until the mask is completely covered with paper mache. Now a trick to paper mache to make it nice and secure and solid is to cover the mask completely one way in strips and once you've completely done the mask then do it the other way and you want four layers i think four layers is the um it's a really good amount of layers to have for paper mache because any less than that and you risk it tearing even once it's dry if it's only two layers of paper thin you risk it um ripping when you take off the mask. So once you've covered this in paper mache, you then put this at this stage, covered in paper mache into the oven. And you again, you have to be really careful with it's in the oven. Um, I check on mine like every two to three minutes just to make sure I'm not burning anything. And you put it on a really low heat and you can help speed up the drying process. The other alternative is just leaving the paper mache to dry for a couple of days and that way you don't risk any sort of hazard that you can get an, a nice dry paper mache and once the paper mache is dry you can take it out of the oven you end up with something like this this mask is completely different um, and what you want to do is you want to separate the paper mask from the dough on the back. So sometimes if I have gone over, like here, if I've gone over, you need to cut using any sort of knife or utensil down, just making sure that you've separated the doughy mixture from the paper. And you want to do it all the way around. Great. So I've gone round and I've just, you know, these bits of paper can stay on, but essentially I've cut away the paper from the dough. And the next thing you do is you slowly and carefully, because at this point it's still quite fragile, you have to take off the mould from the dough. And sometimes I find it easier to flip it back onto this side and give it a slight squeeze and a slight wiggle on its, on its raised bits, because this helps it come off slightly and again you have to be careful not to break it
And there we go. And you can see there's still lots of oil visible on this mask. But you've taken away your paper mache cast from your doughy mask. So once it comes out the oven and I've lifted off my cast, I can take away my features, which may or may not just crumble off at that point. And I can use this base shape again to make the same size mask, which has a different feature. Sometimes, like with this one, I've used a really stiff paper and you can see that it has a very textured feeling to it. Like you can see that it's got quite a lot of texture on it. So if you don't like that texture, what I encourage you to do, if you've got some, if you don't want any texture, you can just get a bit of sanding paper. And you can just sand away any of the sharp edges that you don't like. And again, if you have if you have at least four layers of paper mache, then that means that you can give it a really good sand, which means you can get a beautifully smooth finish onto it. And that's how, you know, you can get masks which have got that really beautiful coat, um, super smooth. Um, so I'll show you some of the masks I've made. So this one, it's just at the paper stage. Um, and I, you know, I can colour this in with pens, with paint, I can add on all different sorts of um, textures to it. I've made this, this mask from some nice green dough and those white bits on it are where, when I took it out of the oven, those white bits off crumbled off but because I want to recreate the mask, the exact same mask, I've just built them back up again with some extra some extra play-doh. I've also made myself a nice sun. If I wanted to do a moon I could do the exact same the exact same paper mache but then paint it in silver. And again, I've made it so all my features on this mask can come away in case I want to do a slightly different facial expression. So once you've finished your mask and you've got it at this stage, this one still needs a bit of work. It's got a little bit of dough left inside from where I didn't coat it very well in oil. But you then can attach some string to it. On this one, I've just put a hole through it and attached some string. So I'm gonna do that with this mask here. So you can do this with like a pencil and just put, pop a pencil the way it will go through. So to get the eye line at where you want it, you wanna put your mask on and you want to put your fingers either side of where you can feel that your mask fits and press there and then hold it and that's where you're going to put your string. So if I put my mask on, it's about here where I want, so here and here and that's just above the eye line and that's where I'm going to put my whole or my string. So you can do this with like a, um, a sharp pencil. You can pop your way through. I've got some nice brown twine, but you could use whatever you've got lying around the house. Just cut a hole. Thread it through. I'm just going to tie it up. Same on the other side. 
Now on this mask, of course, I haven't yet put any eye holes. So that's my next job. Just tying it up. Now the thing about using Vaseline as well, or any oil, is that sometimes you might find that it's a little bit oily on the inside here, but that's why I like to use Vaseline, because Vaseline, it's not, you know, you put it on your lips, it's all right if you put it on your face. So I prefer not to use some sort of wax or, um, which you can use, but I don't like the idea of that going on my face, which is why I choose to use Vaseline. But anyway, you can get a tissue um, and just soak up any excess oil that you have on there. And then to make my eyes, I've just got a little scalpel um, and I'm gonna cut out some eyes here. You can draw on the eyes first time round so that to make sure that you're cutting where you want to cut. So I'm going to cut in the same place. If you haven't got a, a scalpel like I have, and that's also okay, you can just again get a sharp uh, pencil and make a small hole um, all the way through and then just make it slightly bigger by running pencil through it and up and down it. So I've got my two eye holes. They're not quite the si same size just yet, but that's okay because I can make this one bigger at any point. But just to show you what I'm going to do next, because this has got some quite sharp edges now, I've just got my sandpaper again. I'm just going to sand in between those eye holes because I don't want it to be too sharp if I put it on. You do not want anything sharp near your eye. So I'm just going to give it a nice hand. Now sandpaper is fantastic. It, you can do a lot of things with it. If you don't have it, not to worry. I'm sure there are other things that you could use to take away that sharpness by either really carefully cutting and then um, rubbing something quite gritty on it. Like a nail file. A nail file will also do the trick. The other thing about the sandpaper is as well as you can help it, it can help you make them roughly, the eye holes, the same size because you can slowly file away the holes using your sandpaper. Once you've done your sanding, your mask is then ready to decorate. So here we have a mask made from a foam mould and a cast. There you go.